Hey, everyone. Hey, Adam. How's it going? <laughs> Looking forward to the weekend. Yeah, same, same. <laughs> it's closer for me than I think for you. I'm, I'm over in Europe this week. Uh, are you in Europe? Yeah. So. Where? Um, Munich this week. Munich. Well, you're closer. You're four hours away from where I am in Heidelberg. So. <laughs> Oh, it's 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 a it's a nice spot. Just uh, this hey, time everyone. of year, it's uh, getting cooler, so summer's yeah, nice. So it, you're you're in the right time. Uh, it's not yet cold. It's like get, getting colder, but not the cold cold that yeah, kind of keeps you at home. <laughs> it, 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 exactly, exactly. So, not complaining. All good. Yeah. Let me share the meeting notes. Let's give a second. Yeah, I got And just have yourself as an attendee. Right, I think we we're gonna actually get started with intros, and let other folks uh, trickle in, uh, and we can yeah get started. Uh, Cameron, uh, well, first let me uh, just give you like a little bit of a intro. Welcome to the uh, Cloud Native AI Working Group meeting. Um, uh, so this is our second meeting of the month. Uh, and then we have a few agenda items and yeah, excited to be here. So let's, let's get started. Uh, Cameron, um, what's up? <laughs> Good morning. I'm Cameron McDougall, uh, DevOps, MLOps engineer uh, with a, a focus on uh, DevRel marketing right now. So glad to be here. Awesome. Um, I'm, I'm the one that say next month I'm going to be taking charge of the um, s scheduling white paper. So get ready for that. That's great. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, we need to get that moving. Hello. Welcome. Yeah, everyone. Um, I just Abduk, and I work at Red Hat. Um, I'm also one of the cool leads of this working group. So looking forward to working with you all. Awesome. So myself, I'm Ricardo. I'm one of the co-leads of the working group as well. Um, excited to talk to meet you and talk to every one of you and and continue collaborating. Uh, Raghu? Hey, thanks. Yeah, this is uh, Raghu Shankar. I think this is my second meeting. And for those who have not heard my previous intro before, I'm an, an entrepreneur right now looking for new things to work on, some new problems to go solve. 
My background is uh, mostly at Dell Technologies as a product manager, where I did multiple generations of servers. And then I spent almost five years incubating AI at Dell. And for the last two years, I've been doing a lot of reading and research on cloud native architectures, uh, Kubernetes. I have set up a small two node server cluster Kubernetes at home. So I'm looking for new new ideas to see if I can go and incubate them uh, as a project and see where it goes. Awesome. Is this your first meeting? I was there the sec two weeks back. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, awesome. this is my second meeting, but I, it might be good to keep repeating so that people know who I am. <laughs> no, pro no problem. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, yes, some of us actually show up pretty often, but um, it's always good to have like a brief intro. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Josh. Are you muted, Josh? Can you hear me now? Yes. Talking to myself. Sorry about that. Um, my name's Josh Halley. I work for Cisco in the CTO office, focusing on incubation of new technologies. Um, main domain at the moment is observability, AI, and security. Awesome. Welcome. Uh, Hua Min. This is Hua Min Chen, and also from Red Hat. I used to be on this meeting, but I made a local copy of the calendar, which is also flying with the main event. Now I'm back to the events again. <clears throat> so I'm uh, working on the AI sustainability and a responsible AI. Um, the overall pictures on sustainability, security, and uh, safety. Thank you. Yeah, great to have you. And you're also one of the co-leads for this uh, working group. Uh, Victor? Yeah, I'm an independent. Uh, 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 right, you, you, Maybe you at ask. this point is the AI security and the AI security. We can barely hear you. I don't, I don't, Hello. At, at least myself. Oh, I don't know if sorry. Same for me. Is You're breaking up pretty badly, Victor. Yeah, we we didn't catch that. Try, uh, is try this again. better now? It seems yes. like so. Okay. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Main, main interest is AI security and AI safety. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, welcome. We've seen you before. So, uh, uh in. Now we're going to go to uh, Deep Patel. Yeah, hi. Uh, I'm Deep. I work for Cisco. I have mostly security background, application system software. And in this group, I'm working on AI security white paper. So welcome. I'm glad to see you last Monday. So we had a meetup on, on Monday. So I was able to see Deep as well. Uh, Anka Sailor, welcome. Oh, hi, everybody. Uh, you may have seen my name in the agenda. So I'm here to bridge uh, between the compliance working group and the AI working group, share our uh, uh, latest developments with respect to the AI RMF catalog. Awesome. Thanks and welcome. And last but not least, Marlo. Hi, um, some of you are already familiar with me, but I'm just um, helping with the AI uh, sustainability paper with Adele. Awesome, thanks. Uh, okay, so that's all the interest. Did I miss anyone or I think we got everybody? I think we got everybody. Uh, okay, great. Uh, so, Let's go through the agenda. So uh, I think next we have standing items and working groups. Uh, Adol, do you have any idea what the, did you add this item to the agenda or? Did you I, well, I added this a, a duplicate at the end. So let's, uh, I just add, copied that. I think these these are okay. for now pinned items uh, that we can have them every meeting. Um, um, I, yeah. So 
Awesome. So we'll go to the first one, uh, AI environmental sustainability. Um, I think we have Marlo on the call. Do we have other folks? Marlo, do you want to give the update? Um, we're trying to push forward as far as getting content done because we've had, we're still getting continued participation. Uh, did you manage to talk to, with Vincent Adel yet? Not yet. Yes. Not yet. Okay. I, I, I mean to talk to him. Yeah. Thanks for yeah. reminding me. Yeah. yeah, it's four of us primarily working on the paper, but we are making progress. I'm going to try to push um, and see. I don't know if we can get it done by KubeCon, but it's worth a shot because it would be nice to have it out. There is also KubeCon India, which is a bit further than NA, uh, which might be another backup plan. Uh, and that's where Vincent is also presenting. Um, uh, not, you know, he's presenting about sustainability in general, but I think it would be good to, to have that as a, as a motivation also for him. <laughs> yeah. And separately, if he is going there, maybe we should ask him to do the tag. I try to have a tag update at every KubeCon, but we just don't have a lot of Asia participation. Yeah. That would make sense. That's, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's chat was interested about that. Yeah, I can even just hand him the slide deck we have and he can just shove his name on it if he wants. Nice. Awesome. Any anybody else has uh, anything about the AI environmental sustainability white paper? Something that they'd like to see or something that uh, if they'd like to get involved in that or or just any comments? So the question, so this, uh, I guess it's for folks, on, but they're working with the tag environmental sustainability too, right? Yes. Okay. And, and okay, so I, I guess um, if some folks are not aware, the, the TOC actually put together some, some template to, um, to follow for white paper, so if uh, have you guys taken a look at that or not? I can't find it right now. Uh, we did this for the landscape doc for our group. Yeah, so you have to have the chat, uh, the link, uh, Ricardo, in the chat, so you can open it. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. So, so if um, so, it, it it would be just good to just kind of follow a little bit of this, right? So it doesn't have to be exactly the same, but but I think it's just good guidance, you know. And and I know this timeline is just kind of ideal, but uh, I mean, you don't necessarily have to follow the timelines. It's just kind of general, high level guidelines, and and and. I guess it might be helpful just to take a look. You share that link in the notes. Yeah, that's a good point. So. Um, oh. oh. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Uh, anything before we move on to security or scheduling, sorry, and on environmental. Okay. Uh, so let's move on to scheduling paper. So we have, is it Cameron working on, uh, uh, planning to start pretty soon? Yeah. Um, I think what we talked about, I think it was two meetings ago or last meeting, uh, was that, uh, maybe in, in November I'll have time. And I think others are going to have a little bit more time to start working on it too. So, you know, like work's winding down for the holidays a little bit. And, um, so yeah, I think like mid November is my target to get us rolling maybe slowly, but we'll get us rolling. So have you, uh, do you have the, all the links to the, to the existing work that's been happening there? Yeah, I think, I think it's just a Google doc, right? Yeah, yeah it is. That, that's the only one I know of, but yeah. 
Okay, I guess it's the only one. I guess, yeah. yeah. Perfect. Yeah, it's been a lot of work on this, but uh, we haven't actually come around to agree on all the content and the structure, right? So, you know what? So, once we have that settled, then we could just push for like a target date. Like, it's typically KubeCon. It might be just KubeCon Europe in this case. Uh, and I yeah, I think that's a good target. yeah, in. And then we, we're going to have to kind of like, sometimes we have to like remove some sections or, or try to clean it up. So, so that we'll make the target. And, um, uh, cause it's, otherwise it kind of can actually drag on forever. So, and then Yeah, for sure. we don't, we don't actually publish anything. So. <laughs> All right. Any other updates on, on scheduling white paper from anyone else or questions? Right, so next one, security white paper. Yeah, so we met, we had our first uh, group meeting last Friday and we are going to regularly meet uh, first and third Friday uh, at this time only. That is the Fridays in between this meeting. So please join. And as of now, we are using the same Zoom link. So use it. Otherwise, Ricardo is working on to get it inserted into the calendar, right, Ricardo? Yes. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So I think uh, then we can go from there. As of now, in the last meeting, we discussed to basically uh, uh, put the problem statement for each and every bucket. So that's the progress we are making. And in the next one, we are going to just uh, fine tune and we'll go from there. So next, you said next meeting that you you uh, continue uh, yeah. looking at so, the yeah. So next Friday we are going to talk about what we have found in terms of uh, security issues involved in multiple buckets of uh, this entire AI ecosystem. Yeah, cloud, cloud, cloud native AI systems. Yeah. Yeah, yeah do you think it would be help? I think it will help as well. So uh, to look at the response. Responsible. And by the way, I missed the meeting because I was not used to having that in the calendar. So sorry about that. But a responsible AI framework uh, is another ongoing work in the Linux Foundation. Um, I can share with you the latest draft on that. Mm -hmm. There is a dimension on security, and it also has some ideas that we can adopt from there. I want to. Uh, writers of that paper as well, as well as Victor here in that call. Um, we can reuse some of the content as well or make it relatable. Uh, so um, I'll share yeah. an older draft, but should give you the idea. I think the draft now is being finalized. Uh, I'll put it in the notes. Uh, oh, I'm, here it is. Uh, oh. All right. Yeah. So. Wow, okay. Yeah, this is good. Yeah. I think. Thank you. You're welcome. As mentioned, like this is like not the final piece, but um, it it is close to what will become the final. Yeah, I think I would believe that uh, the AI security paper actually we are working on is mostly related to system as opposed to like policy but this is uh, i see that a lot of other details and the modeling so it, this is going to help yeah and th there's also a piece about systems at the end uh, uh, uh compound systems and uh, yeah if you, if you go to the yeah going directly into like rag and how to model that from a responsible ai framework perspective um so just, just a reference, because the idea is to use this framework in the future, in the LF space, um, to describe projects in the landscape and position projects in the landscape to buckets in these dimensions, or one of the, one or more of the dimensions. And one of the biggest dimensions is security, safety, um, and so on. So, yeah.
uh, my my understanding should be is uh, it's sort of the open SSF, uh, I mean the um, CNCF versus open SSF. So um, the AI security discussed in this group probably will be focusing more like Kubernetes or you know products, etc. Whereas uh, the one that uh, Adele mentioned, which is probably go beyond uh, just the you know the project product per se, is more of the overall both the product as well as you know workflows, supply chain security, etc. Yes, so this is going to focus on the technical aspect of security that includes system platforms, modeling, etc. What it is not going to focus is on the policy based safety and security or what problems AI can bring in, in terms of uses uh, uh, and the issues which cannot be solved by the platform or system or software. Uh, because like you said, the the what we call anything related to policy or the uses or consumption of AI, which can make uh, uh, things good or bad in terms of policy, I would believe that either it has to be a separate white paper or it will be taken care of by open SSF folks. Am I right? Yeah, that, that's my understanding too. Yeah. Yeah, but this is not OpenSSF. This is the LFAI in data. This is LFAI. This is not, uh, yeah, OpenSSF is a 10 gen, it's a padded effort. Victor is also involved there. I think you are also deep um, in, in touch. I've seen you. Um, yeah, I, I briefly looked at their agenda as well. I think there's still progress to be made in AI uh, in general, AI security, but this is more like a, here are the dimensions of responsible AI, security and safety is on those dimensions. Here's how they apply to one of the most fam most used architectures like RAG and compound systems. Um, and so these like, if you then zoom into security and safety, then we can get the CNCF paper, which actually goes into more details on the technical aspects and case studies and use cases, which then complements this or uses the same language that was used here, except that we're focusing on one really concrete aspect of it. Yes, so technical aspect of security. Yeah, that's that's the framing. Yeah, I would do. Yes. Yeah, I think uh, LFI and data is looking at it from more of the machine learning AI angle, right? Like uh, the output of the machine learning models and the responsibility that you know folks need to have with respect to you know having the right information or like um, or prevent um, you know malicious intent on, on the output of the models, right? So yeah. I think that's that's kind of like what they're looking at, right? And um, in, in 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 like in some organizations they. They like to have some sort of guardrails around the output of, say, LLMs, right? Because they can actually hallucinate or they can output anything that is toxic, for example, and and they want to prevent that to, those things from happening. Yeah, I would say I will uh, join next meeting if you could. Yeah, I I wish yeah, I I intend to I intended to uh, last week, but I missed it unintentionally so i hope i don't yeah i think a couple of folks also missed because they said i posted it late so this time i'll be a little early yeah <laughs> it, it, it's a i think uh it's not about posting late but about having remembering it, it's in the calendar <laughs> or seeing it in the calendar i i have this strange coloring mechanism that colors uh uh meetings uh so i know but uh, uh the, because this is not there in the CNCF calendar, so you have to, you know, put it manually as of now. Right, right. That's that's the part that yeah. I missed. But I yeah. think everyone uh, would, would need to do the same. We had also done something similar for the uh, summarizer work, which was used used to be on Fridays. The ones that are not like the, the Fridays that we don't have the meetings in, um, but we don't know these meetings anymore. Um, so that should leave some space. Uh, pour them. Yeah. Thank you. One question I have the AI sustainability white paper has their meeting on the calendar, or this is just the target environmental sustainability meeting? It's 
it's on the tag environment sustainability calendar uh where we've been using that okay okay cool. so, so so we don't have to do and then so the scheduling white paper hasn't really started per se having a meeting right so uh so Cameron uh let me know when you want to start and then I can add that meeting to the calendar yeah um let's do let's do after KubeCon Salt Lake City um yeah let's do that that Friday I, I don't know what Friday that falls on but let's let's aim for sometime that week or the next week and we'll get rolling um is anyone going to uh, KubeCon in London next year? I'm planning to go, but I'm not. I can't confirm because you know it's kind of far out, so I I don't have any approvals yet. But that's my goal is to go. But I would imagine a lot of folks here will also will go. Maybe Adil will go and. Um. Yeah, I'm planning to go as well. Well, let's see. <laughs> okay. Cool. I, I might uh, go. It's it, it's close for me, so. Awesome. Yeah, I'll probably go. Are we doing like, are, are there any like launches or anything for these papers uh, at Q Coupon or is it just like, hey, here's a paper? Well, well yeah, there, it, it is, a, it can be a, it can become a, a big announcement on the keynote, right? So like uh, uh, the last Paris KubeCon, we had a big announcement on the, the Cloud Native AI white paper, right? So, so. Yeah, so, but as long as it's kind of completed and published and all that, right? So that's why a lot of times we like to push to get something done so that it actually becomes like this big announcement right, in the, at the conference. Right? Awesome. Yeah, let, let's do it. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think April is a, a good target, so. Awesome. Uh, right, so and, uh, and and sorry on, on on just a side note i i am presenting on a subtopic of scheduling next week at um TechCrunch. so just, well just doing like a little brain date it's not like a formal anything but um i just realized that that's good t content for stuff i wanted to add to the scheduling paper about um gpu uh drive the nvidia gpu drivers and stuff for kubernetes so awesome yeah that's good yeah yeah i currently working at Snowflake and we're having a lot of issues with the GPU scheduling so that so that's all like a very uh I, I guess popular pain point right so uh and how to partition the GPUs and and how to make more efficient use of them yeah definitely it, it's a cool topic I like it so cool um Next topic, uh, we have issues that are in, in the repo. So let me bring that up. Uh, other projects here. So I think, uh, Ron added this item to to actually go through these um, issues. And so anyone sees anything in particular that they like to work on or any comments about them or uh who I mean is this done already? The LLM news summarizer? Yes, the uh, so we uh, across these uh, projects, um, so we have achieved uh, our uh, initial goals of uh, having a certain uh, uh, the two things: the summarizer and the scraper, uh, that, as well as the UI. But there's a uh, limitations over there because the GitHub action can only run for six hours at most. Uh, while we are scraping the transcripts, the summarization time is actually more than six hours, so we can only have a limited number of summarizations. Um, so given that it is, we, I think the project has been um, finished at the moment. The extended result hopefully be resolved uh, on the end. But now that we control of this project, so we still have the UI. You can view the latest the summarization, and we have the process to get the latest summarize, uh, the latest video transcripts, and fit into the summarization process. 
Got it. But so do you do you want us to keep this issue open or do you want to break it down, break down some of the tasks and and create something else? Or? I will uh, follow up um, offline after this meeting. Thank you for the pointer. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Any other things that folks want to discuss around here? There's a um, user survey that was added by Ron. I just have... moved uh, one of the issues to close, so to update the logo in the charter doc, so that's done. Um, awesome. Yeah, yeah, there there are three. So I guess one one topic that I was interested maybe to bring up is the patterns of blueprints, where you know just looking at how people are deploying AI today on cloud native environments and 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 extracting those like personal anecdotal experiences. Uh, into best practices and recipes that people can make use of um, in the landscape. Uh, I think this this needs a bit more research um, and reaching out to folks. So if someone wants to help here, um, that would be great because that would, I think this is one of the things that would have a high impact with just consuming what exists and assembling and curating it into a structure that people can consume. Uh, how does is is this the same or, or this is different or this is for just LLMs, right? So. This um so this is basically an LL, so similar to the summarizer. Uh, you'd have a an, an LLM that takes that actually might feed into that previous issue with patterns of blueprints, and you can chat with that LLM and ask it, uh, how can I deploy, uh, 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 you know, uh, an, an AI application, a RAG application, an agent application, and it will, you know, look into existing patterns on cloud native and give you the right architecture. Uh, there was a doc that I shared, um, which probably might have, yeah, maybe this doc here uh, that I created initially. Um, right. Um, okay. So that, how is it different from the OPA? Uh, no, OPA is so OPA would would look into uh, the previous one, not this one. This one is actually a large an AI application that you can talk to to query about best reference architectures for different use cases in AI. The other one is OPA is more like a set of reference architectures um, that or opinionated reference or architectures. Um, uh, maybe it was Intel Gaudi and so on, but there are other contributors as well, which is great, um, to look into how to deploy AI applications in general, not focusing on cloud native per se as a focus focal point. Um, so that might be the intersection. You know, like if there'll be OPA folks want to expand to also add patterns to cloud native, or we can then create those cloud native patterns and make use of OPA content. But this is different. From what you're showing in the screen now, what you're showing in the screen now is the um uh is is the LLM or the application that would help. Got it. Oh, I see what you're saying. So you're talking about the the blueprint. Yeah, this is yeah. Got it. And there are other references here that people have, have looked into, and we can. So the, it, it, I think there's good content to start with. Again, it needs time um, and commitment to curate something so that, yeah, if, if other folks will be interested, I think this will be very, like a low hanging fruit um, that will help the community a lot. Someone like this, uh, blue, blueprint is all you need, like attention is all you need. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Adele, I've, got a, I've got a question. Are you, are you looking at a blueprint around what expected and, and anticipated scale you require for different functions like fine tuning, building a brand new model, rag, that sort of thing, or what, what, what's the, yeah. would that be yeah. included in it? So, so the sort of scale factors and form factors for achieving function or? Take, take what you said now, like I, I want to deploy rag on top of uh, Kubernetes. What are the challenges? Like have an LLM, you know, what do I, to serve that LLM, what are the challenges? How are people doing it to, today? Like if you look at platforms today, deploying AI applications, how are they using that? And can we extract that 
Um, and what if, if they're using cloud native technology? So if, for example, using Kubernetes and deploying on top of Kubernetes as an AI application, how are they doing that? What are they tweaking? Uh, can we extract this knowledge in bits and pieces to advice into, here's how people are deploying RAG on Kubernetes and here's what you need to follow or do based on what we've seen and the research we've done. That's one thing. They're deploying multi-agent on Kube is what people are doing. Um, and that can go to basically all the use cases that we're uh, seeing today. If you want to fine tune, it's like, how do you fine tune on Kube? What are the specific knobs that you want to turn uh, to get efficient results? Uh, similarly, there's a ton of other topics that, you know, um, you could extract and, and apply to extra, you know, to get a blueprint more or less. Okay. Okay, interesting. Um, I'll, I'll take a look at the document if it's in there. <laughs> it sounds like interesting stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let me add it to that. Let me know. Like, I, I can, I, I can uh, work with someone on a part-time capacity, but at this point, I can't take it on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, entirely. So I'll need a partner or more partners to help me here. Yeah, yeah. One thing to keep in mind is that there are a lot of interesting things, but also we need to kind of break down all the different tasks and kind of understand what we we can or we cannot do, right? So, based on the amount of people who have time to actually volunteer. Okay, so um, any other issues on on the repo? Anyone wants to talk about before we move on? We. We have about 22 minutes left, so. If, if I would summarize, there's a lot of work and even potential ideas that can be added or can be consumed from here. Uh, we have, so part of the activities have been the white papers. The white papers are not the only thing that we can do or not the only form factor of knowledge that we can extract. Even knowledge is not the only thing that, you can see here the summarizer is code and project. So there is a lot of things that can be done. Um, the idea here is to, 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 to see who's interesting to, to what. So if you want to talk to your peers and so on, and you're willing, they're willing to help or collaborate on, on some of those topics, this will move the needle. Uh, Cause it, it takes, it takes, uh, effort and time to get something uh, out there, but then it has a lot of impact for other folks in the community. So, I have a question. Um, do we have any good resource from any tag CNCF about summary of the tools available for AI, basically? Any kind of tools, whether it is for load balancing, data management, model, security, we had, if you look at the issues, like there was an intention to create a radar, mm. <laughs> uh, which would have done that job. Uh, again, similar to the same issue, like people's time uh, is, is what's needed here. Um, but yeah, to, to link, no, to un I'm not aware of someone who's done that cohesively. And the radar, radar was what has, uh, what the, the effort that would have addressed this gap. Um, the, yeah, actually, on the other hand, you, you're going to find that the landscape has the projects that exist today. They're not necessarily what or how people are using. They're just the projects that we categorized. And so we have our own landscape now that has been done. One of the things that we've done was the landscape to put like CNAI projects, like what is on data, what is on orchestration, what is on uh, scheduling. So that exists within the realm, but it would not be like that kind of coverage that I think you're asking about. If that is enough, if the landscape is enough, I think is enough, that's fine. But uh, I think uh, you're asking more cohesive or am I wrong? <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, I think you got it right. Maybe it's good to actually start it here because RFAI, is creating a new landscape for anything generally AI related in, in that ecosystem. So for CNCF, it might be to start from here to actually create a landscape of anything tools related to CNCF or AI. 
Uh, maybe Ricardo, if you, if you open that link, uh, just to show folks maybe who are new to the group, uh, what we have already today. And are you? I just I posted it in the chat. Yeah. So there's, uh, that's the non grid view, but it's good. So if you look at the left here. There is the categories of things. So when we were writing the white paper that helped, like you know, we had a mind map that mind map can turn into this landscape. Um, and I think that this has not been updated in a bit, but that was the idea. These ex existing tooling project, you know, that contribute or have art in AI. And uh, that's one way to categorize it. I think we it can be more complete, um, but the radar would then have taken a different route, which is again to be more use case specific, like what people are using now, what people will plan to use in the future, what people are exploring, experimental, and how. Um, so a meld of both to cover tooling and how to use them would have been ideal. But the landscape exists today. Um, if, if if people don't know about that, uh, guys, uh, sorry to interrupt. <laughs> I just want to do a time check. Uh, Ricardo, I understand when uh, Claudia mentioned about the you know accepting the presentation today, she shared that I need about half an hour. So I wanted to make sure we do a time check on the. Oh yeah. Oh, th um. Thanks for bringing that up. And yeah. In. Yeah, I think it's we can we can get started with your presentation, right? So, um, yeah, and, and and we'll go over the the other items, uh, um, at a later time. But uh, you know, feel free to read read some of these items, uh, um, afterwards. I actually didn't know. Honestly, I I, I didn't notice that in the uh, in the agenda. I felt it's uh, yeah, but I think yeah, we should start with that now. Yeah, no problem. When you. Uh, invite me to introduce myself. I <laughs> I share that I'm here for the presentation. <laughs> yeah, but the, yeah, we're not aware how long you need it. But great, thanks for bringing it up and and yeah, take it okay. away. Okay, so um, I have a, a short introduction just to position what I'm going to talk about, and then a sample for the content. Uh, that my goal here is looking to your expertise to provide content for the technology that we that we bring to the table. Um, so some of you, how how familiar is the uh, audience here, uh, uh, Ricardo, with uh, compliance? I understand that most of us have some notion of cybersecurity, but in terms of compliance, um, is it helpful to go through some details or the audience is you know, fully aware, they know what this is about, I can go directly into uh, compliance as code? I think uh, you can go directly. I think most folks will probably be familiar with uh, yeah, what basic compliance is. Okay, so uh, that's how we differentiate between security and compliance, right? So uh, in security, we have primarily cybersecurity, and these are discretionary requirements, while in compliance, we are looking at um, mandatory uh, requirements, and uh, compliance typically uh, encompasses many domains beyond cybersecurity, uh, AI, finances, facilities, operations, and, and so on. So the technology that we bring here is domain agnostic and regulation agnostic, so can be used across any of those um, uh, domains. Uh, in in compliance, we are looking at four main steps, uh, um, and these are define, implement, assess, and audit. Right. So, defining, we are really looking at the set of controls um, across the those domains that we have just discussed: industries, technologies, and um, as part of the definition. Um, um, uh, uh, CISO, the CISO organization will select which set of those controls are relevant for, for their environments. Implement is what the name does. Now that we have the, the, the controls, right, is the step of, of actually making them available in the environment. Assessing is making sure that at runtime, those controls are uh, satisfied. So the way that they are implemented and the actual state in the environment satisfies the desired state. 
uh, uh, described in the define and audit is you know putting together the reports or what is needed so that this is officially certified right the the uh, uh, behavior aligned with the compliance is officially certified there's a slide that is pretty busy but um, uh, this will show will take those four steps um, and show what are the artifacts associated with them and that would help uh, with the type of content that I'm looking on, particularly in the case of uh, uh, AI. So here we have the four steps uh, horizontally. So um, the define, implement, assess, and audit. On the top, we have just you know the type of regulations that you may be familiar with. They are typically come as PDF and spreadsheets. Uh, and you know, if we are looking at continuous compliance and compliance digitization, that you are aware this is very difficult to work with. So um, uh, in the next step, I show what it means to digitize compliance in two, uh, in two um, um, use cases. One is NIST 853 and the other one is the, AI Act, uh, the AI, AUA Act. Uh, when I've done the slide, the uh, AI uh, RMF wasn't ready. So eventually we will update this for AI RMF, but it doesn't matter. The controls are pretty similar, so should be um, clear for you, right, what, what we are looking at in terms of the granularity. Going from the defined control level, uh, which is, you know, very high uh, level English description of what the regulators are looking for. So in the case of NIST 853, we are looking to um, uh, SC7 here, boundary protection, um, in the case of the AI, like transparency obligations. So this is a, this is a high level description. And if we are looking at how we represent that in compliance as code, and you may have, how many of you are familiar with OSCAL, the NIST compliance as code standard? Uh, not familiar with it, but I don't know if any other folks are. So. Okay, so OSCAL stands for Open Security Assessment Control Language. It is a domain agnostic, regulation agnostic uh, language. It's not a standard in the sense of NIST 853 providing control. It's a standard in, uh, in terms of uh, uh, framework and schemas for the compliance artifact. So it defines compliance as code in order to uh, uh, move the compliance um, exercise from a process which is you know, today done annually, quarterly, you are all familiar with that, to more of a continuous compliance uh, through the help of compliance as code. So in the context, the last column is basically uh, the yellow part is related to OSCAL. So in OSCAL, we have the catalog, the profile and the mappings to help uh, expressing uh, the artifacts related to the regulations, right? To, um, so we are looking at the catalog so if we are looking at NIST 853, this can be YAML or XML, or uh, it's a catalog of about a thousand controls. And in that YAML XML format, we describe the control, the parameters associated with that, potential values for those parameters, so on and so forth. A profile is the result of a, a, a established baseline for a particular uh, a catalog or for a particular um, uh, organization. So this means that uh, it's a subset of the controls in the catalog and the uh, parameters are defined, a selection is done. So um, if, for instance, right, if you take NIST 853, we have three baselines, low, moderate, and um, low, moderate, and high. There is a question uh, on the chat. I see the chat popped up, but I cannot see when I'm sharing the, the chat itself. So please go ahead if there is a question. Yeah, the question was, uh, this is really good. And are we recording the meetings and still being uploaded? Yes. So we recorded the meetings. And, okay. And the, so yeah. the, the catalog, the profile, which may, you may know it more as a, as a baseline, a subset of the catalog with the precise parameter values. And obviously, when I go from the baseline, low, moderate, high, those parameters become more and more stringent. And then the mapping, it helps. Uh, and mapping is now in a dev um uh release so it's not in the official release of the of the oscal so the next release of oscal will include this mapping but i present it here because it's very useful it allows to map uh, uh two catalogs or two profiles and this is very useful in terms of um evidence reuse and uh posture reuse posture is a fancy word in compliance to say the 
uh, the state of the controls, satisfied or unsatisfied. So now we are moving from define to implement. So the moment I move from define to implement, we switch do domains, we go from regulation to technology. So now we are talking about cloud object storage and Kubernetes and VPC or the AI system or pipeline um, where the application is developed or the model is created. So here, we, uh, when we implement those controls, um, we uh, express the constraints on the particular technology, well-defined technology, as rules, right? And, and the reason that we need to do that uh, mapping and that switch in level of granularity from the generic to specific is that uh, if we are looking to automate, it's not possible to directly automate the high-level control, right? So while the specific uh, rule, cloud object storage, is enabled on private endpoints or the system um, the AI system has the user informed that they are interacting with AI, right? This now can be uh, automated. Um, not everything, right, can be automated. Uh, so there is there is specific uh, uh, support uh, uh, that needs to be provided as APIs or uh, other other ways in order to allow for the automation of the assessment. Um, but expressing it at this level of detail helps towards that. So, so here is where we try to develop, right, if we take the RRMF that I'm going to present next, to the specific level of a technology and show what are the rules so that we are able to programmatically collect the information, uh, uh, the evidence, and, and assess. So in OSCAL, right, in compliance as code, we express that uh, granularity at the rule level in OSCAL component. So you, you see now, before we are talking about a catalog, now we are talking about a component. A component can be hardware, software, a service, uh, uh, a process, right? So it's a very specific piece of hardware, software, service, and so on. Uh, and we have the OSCAL system security plan. This is more of a FedRAMP reference in there for those who are familiar with FedRAMP. The content of the component definition and the system security plan is the same. The difference is that the component definition is an XML or a YAML um, by technology. So I have this technology and these are the controls that I'm talking about. In the system security plan, because this is for an auditor, this is, you know, a turnaround and it's from a control point of view. I have this control, what is the technology and its rules that I'm talking about. But the content is the same, it's just uh, shoveled differently. Okay. Um, so there is one more item here in the uh, OSCAL that is the assessment result. Uh, but before getting to that, because this assessment result bridges from compliance to policy, right? So now we are moving from this uh, uh, implement to assess. So we are leaving the compliance domain and we are entering the policy domain. So you are familiar with policy as code, I'm sure in various contexts, this has been done as code for many years now. Um, and um, the, the uh, reason to now bridge the two, the policy as code and compliance as code, to be able to harvest now that automation and through the uh, uh, poly uh, compliance as code be able to digitize that part as well. So we are looking here, for instance, to, if we take the example of the rule for uh, cloud object storage in private in, uh, on uh, private endpoints, if you look, the system is going to collect evidence. So in gray at the bottom, we have evidence. This can be the JSON states from the APIs or can be event logs, they can be the infrastructure as code. If we are applying uh, the uh, flow here, the workflow here to CICD pipelines, obviously we are not going to have AI, nothing is deployed, but we have the infrastructure as code or even draw IO, right? So any type of uh, evidence. And then the assessment will have a check. Uh, I give here two examples, one is, um, imperative implementation and the other one is declarative implementation. So you have both. Policy can be implemented as, as Python or JavaScript as well as YAML, right? If you look at uh, Ansible or OPA, Rego, uh, these are typical uh, policy um, engines that, that can be used. So now, as you can imagine, those policies optimize very different uh, 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 type of use cases. If we are looking at configuration, uh, uh, it is very damnable to policy as code. I have the configuration, A should be equal to B, right? Uh, declarative works very well. If I'm talking about 
policy batch processing. I need to take my million inventory items and show that they have a security uh, a policy associated with that or the all the users. Have, so this cannot be done uh, programmatically. We need, uh, sorry, it can be done programmatically, but not through a declarative type of language. So that's where we use more of a, uh, 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 batch type of processing with Python or with JavaScript. Why, why am I differentiating is to show that it's not possible to standardize the policy as code the same way that we have seen above in OSCAL standardizing the compliance as code. Um, and, and we don't uh, encourage that. So we should leave the policy engines do what they optimize best, but where we can align with the uh, normalization so that we are able to have a meaningful centralization and um, and um, aggregation, what is needed right for the posture and for the audit, is at the compliance result. So we we take the results, whatever they are, across the different uh, uh, policy uh, and posture management systems. So you look at Prisma, it will have one type of, uh, if you look at Archer, it will have a different type of uh, 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 format, but we can take this and transform to OSCAL assessment result. And this is what, where OSCAL assessment result becomes that bridge in terms of normalization between my various policy engines and the uh, uh, standardized compliance as code. So now everything in the same format for assessment result, I can do now meaningful uh, aggregation between AI posture and the cybersecurity posture of the systems that support that particular uh, AI uh, development, whether it's application or the model and, and so on. So that, that's where this becomes relevant. So, um, and, and there is one more slide that, you know, shows the uh, various uh, OSCAL artifacts. We, I have two more minutes, so let me just share a catalog and I'll take any question in meantime, if you have. So share... Um, Okay, so so we have share. We have a technology that allows us to um, represent uh, and automatically transform whatever artifacts are available. As you can imagine, typically the compliance personas are not technical people. They don't feel comfortable working with JSON. They typically work with spreadsheets and uh, uh, text. So the tools that we are providing and they are now in OSCAL in um, CNCF sandbox, right? We will skip that, uh, Ricardo, for another presentation, right? Help to transform whatever native formats are in OSCAL. And here I have just one minute left to show taking the AI RMF and providing the JSON, right? So, so this is this is the um, programmatic format for the AI RMF uh, catalog. So, so my goal, right, would be to work with you guys and now take the technology that I've heard earlier, uh, Adele and the other are asking, what, what is typical technology in AI? And identify how those controls are implemented, applied, and identify those rules that we have discussed, I presented, at the component level, right? Taking this catalog to the next level of uh, detail and, and then how do we provide assessment for them? What would be the policy engines? So again, we provide the technology, not the content. So I'm working with a cybersecurity team in terms of cybersecurity content, CIS benchmarks. So the, the um, dialogue here is really to be able to capture the AI aspects uh, of, of um, risk and control in that format that for which we have the SDK and the tooling. So I had more to present, but I think I'll take next time. So the component level we'll present next time. We started, uh, take a stab <laughs> to give an example how this looks like, because I think these are four years of work, what I'm showing here. So I don't expect you in 15 minutes to you know digest everything, uh, but it's just to open the communication and tell you guys, we are not the AI experts, but we provide the technology to be able to help you digitize the compliance support. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we can have a follow up on the next meeting. I think it's in about, I don't know if you have a next meeting because it might overlap with KubeCon, but then we'll have to check uh, next month. But 
but yeah, uh, definitely would like to hear Alindra more. Alindra shows it. he's on eighth, I guess. It's uh, what do you say, Adam? So it was deep, but I, I, I wanted to also ask him, but go ahead, deep. Oh, oh deep, no. okay. Uh, no, I think I was saying that there is a meeting uh, uh, two weeks from now in the calendar, eighth. Uh, but I do have a question. The question is that uh, uh, in Oscar case, I actually understand that uh, there are uh, technical definition of compliance and you can pull the data. Uh, but in this case, uh, what is the marker? I mean, how can we put something? Uh, I mean, because a definition of compliance all need to be technical for it to work, right? In term, I mean, I, I'm just thinking that if you have a JSON, what exactly you are showing there uh, if it is not mathematics, yes or no? So are you talking at the catalog level where it's English, where we do not have this type of technical, right? It's a high level text description of what is an intent, right? Uh, related to diversity, related to AI hallucination, right? There is nothing technical in there, right? So, so, uh, so there are, so there is technical from the point of view that the content is technical and in AI is not technical, right? In, in finances is not technical. It's about uh, financial transactions. Right. But the point is that that control in the AIRMF has a requirement. And what we are trying to do is map that English description, whether it's financial or AI, which is non-technical, right? It's about hallucination. There's nothing technical in the hallucination. And as part of the actual system component in terms of OSCAL, right, identify what are some rules that this system can offer as API, as a CLI, as a configuration, as a output, right, JSON, that now I can build upon and satisfy the hallucination. Is there a score? Is there a test? Is there uh, any type of information that now I can assess? So that translation, which is, by the way, the what is called the compliance governance, getting from that non-technical content to the technical at the product level at, at the right is what helps us then in the next step of the assessment to have something technical to talk about and to uh, programmatically assess and not everything is going to be accessible right so sometimes is uh, documentation related the requirement is that i document all the steps and the procedures and it's a document there is nothing that we can do programmatically but i have seen in the uh, ai rmf a lot of that has potential for automation all the hallucination drift uh, uh, diversity, uh, bias, and, and so on. There is enough support, I think. In <laughs> yes, exactly. There is enough support, t-shirt wise or not, to uh, to be able to capture it uh, programmatically, right? So it's technical content and non-technical content versus programmatic uh, inference, right? So I see those two things as very different right you can have a non-technical content but bridge it down to a programmatic uh, assessment does it make sense what i'm saying or uh, yeah, so yeah. Actually, you're... go ahead go ahead no, go ahead dear. yeah no i was saying that uh, what i'm getting is that actually you provide a framework to think it looks like and to go uh, you know item by item in terms of uh, uh, the answer not being basically mathematical the answer is uh, kind of uh, depending upon the question itself yes no or whatever so I'm getting that. Or maybe I'll exactly. you exactly. have to go through Because I yeah. didn't come with bias and drift and, and so on myself. I have seen it as part of the AI RMF. And I know now that if we follow the procedure of the compliance as code and we slice and dice, eventually we reach at the level of programmatic expression where we can collect this programmatically. That's the exercise that I propose to you to do together. I provide the framework and you provide the content that can be uh, expressed in, in that way, rather than, because compliance is going to be a very important part of AI. And, and rather than you doing that 50% in a domain that you are not interested in, I come forward and say, look, I've already digged into that for four years. We have technology, okay? It's a very well established data model that we use for cybersecurity finances and so on. It will apply for AI and do this work together. And we have a very good relationship with NIST. So if there are changes, oh, we already done uh, AI change uh, related changes in the mapping. That's why mapping took so long time because a lot of the mapping can be done AI based. So now we have as part of the model, right? 
was that mapping done through AI so that we can inform the user of the mapping artifact that it wasn't a human behind. So if there are this type of changes, I have that relationship with NIST to bridge the changes that need to be done to the framework. Yeah, thank you. To the standard itself, right? Yeah, thank you. This is super interesting. Uh, do you mind sharing your slides? Uh, I mean, we can have a follow-up in the next meeting, but we'll, yeah, we'll yeah, yes, of course. Piece. Yeah, to see the slides and any any. Is additional. there a Slack? Uh, in a CNCF, I can give it to me to Claudia, and she can share as well, or give you to you, Ricardo. But if there is a Slack, I can put it there. What is the yeah. process? It's the Slack is the WG uh, dash artificial uh, dash intelligence on, okay, on, on CNCF Slack. Claudia is already there, so if you can, yeah, and it just okay. so it's okay to put it there, or you prefer Ricardo to get it first and. You can just uh, you can just, it. <laughs> or the notes, right? You can the, the notes if you if you can share it in the notes. If it's already there, then it, you know we can just reference the notes. Uh, but I, oh, I yes. of course, yeah, I can put it yeah. in Slack and then put the link from Slack in the notes. So this way, people can have the yeah. And I think there's a lot of what you said to go on from uh, maybe in part two in the next meeting will be like the first thing we go through, just the discussions, because um, there are two aspects I'm thinking about, uh, always like AI for, and how can we use that for AI uh, in, in, in the cloud native context? And I think bridging the gap, so AI can help translate English to context and use case onto a technology like Kubernetes and how to apply it. Um, so that's a, an interesting use case uh, that we can, explore but also the other way around um where that english can change to meet and the, the ai landscape that is growing um so they kind of like will complement the ai piece like to generate code will be is a spectrum um the spectrum needs to be like like humans it's not a yes or no there's usually a spectrum and compliance is a spectrum so how to pinpoint uh, to actual rules that people agree and say is is compliant or not will also be a challenge and that would require like AI tuning and fine tuning to make sure. But anyways, like there's a lot to go from here. Uh, oh, definitely. Uh, That's why I was, I wanted to be very precise when I come with that presentation is about compliance for AI. There is also the AI for compliance, right? Which yeah. is a totally different aspect. And of course we have uh, agents. I mean, some of them will be, uh, a compliance assessment agent will be presented uh, it, uh, to public uh, domain in December by, by my team. But I didn't want to combine everything here because it will confuse the people. This is only about compliance for AI, being in compliance as code to help AI manage in a, you know, engineering uh, type of approach the compliance rather than writing down, uh, you know, I've done this and that, which is the approach today with, with uh, the compliance processes. That's that's the thing. And you are right. When when And I'm glad that this is already clear because a lot of people I'm talking to and takes a while to compile the two. So it seems like this team, maybe because you are AI, you, uh, this is very clear. We can switch maybe in 2025 after our agent becomes public, right? Into, into that as well. There is a lot. It, there, there is so much in AI for compliance that, you know, it will be a very interesting collaboration there too. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you very much. Uh, it's already past 10 minutes, but uh, it was Thank you so much you. for taking the time and, and for having me on the agenda. Yes, yeah, so I'm I'm looking forward. Sure. We'll, keep, uh, we'll keep chatting. We'll keep chatting. Okay. Uh, thank Great you. presentation, Anka. And thanks, thank everyone. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good weekend, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.